Just over three quarters of a mile off the north end of Kwajalein Island is the wreck of the Aikuda Maru. The Aikuda Maru was built in 1936 as a civilian passenger and cargo ship and it had a length of 307 feet and a beam of 45 feet. The Aikuda Maru had a Type C configuration, meaning the engine room and main superstructure are at the center of the vessel with cargo holds forward and aft. Just over a year after it was built, it was requisitioned for military duty by the Imperial Japanese Navy. For the next six and a half years, the Aikuda traveled to various ports in Asia and around the Pacific and participated in several military operations after war broke out between the United States and Japan. On January 12, 1944, just 18 days before the beginning of Operation Flintlock, the Aikuda Maru was sunk by U.S. Navy land-based bombers which were flying from Abamama in the recently captured Gilbert Islands. The PB-4Y-1 was the navalized version of the U.S. Army Air Force's B-24 Liberator. Most PB-4Y-1s had an airco nose turret in place of the glassed-in noses or nose turret types used on Army Air Force B-24s. The strike was carried out by four planes each from Patrol Bombing Squadron 108 and 109. Also on the strike were two specially modified planes from Fleet Air Photographic Squadron 3. The strike force departed from Abamama just before 8.30 a.m. and flew at wave top height to avoid detection, arriving over the southern end of Kwajalein Atoll at noon. The mission was to obtain low-altitude photography of the seaward beaches and reef area from Kwajalein Island to Enubuj Island to aid in planning for the upcoming invasion. Other mission objectives were to attack shipping and anchorage off Kwajalein Island, and installations on Gia Island, Any Labagan Island, and Kwajalein Island were bombed as well. This photo was taken by one of the strike aircraft as it came in over Kwajalein Island, just above treetop height. Shipping in the anchorage is seen under attack, and the pier in Enubuj Island are seen as well. Other planes in the strike force can be made out in the photo. This photo, taken seconds later, shows the Aikuda Maru under attack. The ship is bracketed by near misses, and the black smoke and fireball are caused by at least one of the bombs hitting the ship. Other strike planes can be seen in this photo as well. The Aikuda was hit in the area of the number 3 and number 4 cargo holds, starting fires. The available historical information does not indicate if more than one bomb hit the ship. An early method of locating wrecks at Kwajalein Atoll was to drag a weighted anchor until it snagged on something, then divers would go down to see what the anchor had snagged on. This is how the Aikuda was found in January 1966. A subsurface buoy at the wreck site provides a convenient tie-off for dive boats visiting the wreck. The ship is lying on its port side, and descending along the buoy line, the first section that comes into view is the remnants of the aft end of the ship. Japanese records indicate that the Aikuda burns for two and a half hours after being hit, and around 2.30 p.m., a large explosion blew the stern apart, sinking the ship. The torn and twisted steel of the hull gives mute testimony to the force of the explosion. Cargo hold 3 is still intact, but much of cargo hold number 4 and everything aft is missing. There is little left in cargo hold number 4, and cargo hold number 3 has a large tank with valves mounted on it, possibly a water or fuel tank. Continuing forward to the midship section, the engine room skylights are a prominent feature on this section of the wreck. Skylights provided light and ventilation for the engine room spaces. They also provided an opening for raising or lowering heavy items with either the ship's crane or a shore crane, such as replacement parts for the ship's engines. Most of the skylights are closed or blocked by tangled wreckage, blocking any decent view into the engine room. Part of the ship's funnel is broken off, either during the sinking of the ship or sometime over the decades since. Forward of the funnel, an opening gives divers a view into part of the engine room. Walkways and machinery can be seen with a good dive light. Moving past the main superstructure to the forward section of the wreck, cargo holds 1 and 2 contain cables, pipes, and sake bottles. 
The forward section of the ship also has features that make the Akuta unique among the Japanese ships sunk in the lagoon, which are the 5-inch guns mounted on both sides of the deck between cargo holds 1 and 2. Many of the Japanese ships and smaller vessels sunk in the Kwajalein Lagoon have deck guns of various sizes mounted on their bow. The Japanese Navy converted the Akuta Maru to an auxiliary gunboat, and one 5-inch gun was added to both sides of the deck forward of the main superstructure. This gun configuration is not seen on any of the other Japanese ships that were sunk in the lagoon. The starboard side gun is easily explored, but since the ship lies on its port side, the port side gun is beyond the depth limits for recreational scuba diving. On a day with good visibility, it can be seen beneath a tangle of pipes and cargo handling booms. The 5 inch bow gun is canned to starboard, indicating that it was possibly in use to defend the ship from the air attack that sank it. A pile of shell casings is lying on the lagoon bottom below the gun, and they can be seen on the day when the visibility is good. Heading back to the buoy line from the bow gives divers a great view along the starboard side of the rack, and friendly batfish are often in the area to escort divers. Due to its depth, the Aikuda Maru is not one of the more frequently visited wrecks in the lagoon, but there is still plenty for a diver to see and explore on the wreck without going below the 130-foot recreational depth limit. The unique gun configuration and the aquatic life on the wreck are just two reasons that make the Aikuda Maru well worth multiple visits for history buffs and nature enthusiasts alike.